Hi, everyone. So I'm Ming Chi Hu, and I'm a faculty member of the Department of Bioenvironmental System Engineering and uh, at uh, National Taiwan University. So today my topic is uh, we, we try to propose a new methodology. We, we call it uh, spectrum optimization analysis. And uh, we want to apply this uh, new measure for the water resource management. So why we need to uh, propose this new methodology? Because uh, later uh, on the right hand side, you can probably see the, this is a map of Taiwan. And in the, uh, in the middle area, the green part is the mountain area. So in Taiwan, we have uh, many river uh, to supply water resource. And uh, we also have some uh, storage uh, reservoir system. And so, so uh, in each area, we have a small uh, local regional uh, water resource system. And then lately, we try to connect those water supply system together. And uh, hopefully we can uh, provide a more stable water resource uh, to the demand. So, um, so, so since we, 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 we have this uh, new uh, challenge, we try to connect those uh, water resource system. And uh, uh, to, to connect the water resource system always provide a good solution for water resource management. The reason is that because uh, imagine that you compare an uh, old system, uh, you, you didn't connect a uh, system together. You, you compare this old system. And uh, in the new system, you, you connect two systems together. So, so you, ha you have the connection pipeline. So you connect the, those two systems together. So if you compare the old system with new system, in the new system, you always can do the same thing with the, the same uh, management strategy with uh, old system. You, you, because uh, you, just, uh, you just don't use that uh, pipeline. So at least you can do the same thing, the same strategy with old system. So uh, if you compare the new system with the old system, the new system is always better. And uh, on the other hand, because uh, for, for the water supply and the water demand, uh, you, you are not just compare the, you, you don't just want the, the, the uh, supply to meet the demand at some specific time. You want the 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 the, the, the supply uh, supply to meet the demand for the old time, right? Along the time uh, axis. So actually, we 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 need to compare our supply uh, time series to to uh, we, we need to compare the supply time series to uh, to demand time series. So actually, uh, in mathematical term you compare the supply function to the demand function. So you compare two, two functions together. But uh, so, so, so when you do the optimization, you, you want to, uh, to do the water resource management. You need to compare, com you, you need to make decision for the, uh, for, for the supply, for, for the supply uh, functions to compare with the demand functions. So basically, basically you, you do those optimization on the function space. So, but on the function space, you need to um, you need to uh, decompose those functions into their their uh, unique vectors. So, by by analyze uh, those uh, functions, actually you you have many mathematical tools. So, uh, at least the spectrum analysis or the Fourier analysis is the way to analyze those uh, functions. So that's why we propose a new methodology to combine optimization with the spectrum analysis. So that's the idea of this research. So uh, my, my research is more, more, more like an analytical uh, methodology uh, pro proposal and then compare with the previous talk. And uh, my, my the, the contribution of this research is try to provide some analytical uh, tool for the decision make maker. So uh, here are some background. So lately we have uh, the, some challenge for, uh, from the, the uh, climate change and uh, also the extreme uh, events. So of course, uh, sometimes we face the, the water shortage and then we need to do a better uh, water resource management. And uh, so uh, as I mentioned before, so uh, our uh, water resource agency, they try to 
um, there, there are many ways to do water resource management. For, for example, you can have a new water supply source and uh, or you, you can do the uh, demand side management. And so, so there are some other way to state, state, state stabilize uh, water management. For example, the, you, you can have some backup uh, water resource or you, you can do the uh, better uh, water management. So, so uh, lately, my, uh, my, our, our water resource agency, they, they try to connect those uh, uh, water resource systems and then they try to build those uh, pipeline and uh, to uh, deliver so so once you you have some water shortage you can deliver water uh, from uh, if you have more water on the region one you can deliver from the region one to region two so that's why they they try to build the the pipeline to connect those water resource system and the the purpose of our research is try to have some uh, quantitative analysis we, we try to propose some new tools for the water resource management. Uh, so, so the question we have is that, uh, can we have, a, so, so there are many choice to connect the, the water resource system. So in each uh, water resource system, you have uh, many, uh, man, many uh, water supply, and then you, you also can do the demand side management. And then, so, so how are you gonna connect your, your uh, water resource system? If you have two water resource systems, how, how do you connect them? So actually, uh, sometimes uh, in, in a very complicated system, you have many choice. So do we, can we have a, a systematic uh, a tool to analyze this, uh, to, to decide which, uh, what, uh, which, which pipeline to build can provide the a better water, to, to provide the best uh, water resource management? So we want to de uh, deliver a systematic analysis for this, uh, this problem. And also uh, there are some existing uh, pipeline to, to deliver water resource from, the, uh, from different uh, water resource system. So can we quantify those uh, pipeline, the, the contribution of those, those pipeline? And also uh, if we have a new pipeline to build, uh, how can we uh, choose them? So that's... Uh, that that's why why we want to answer. So uh, for for our methodology, we try to combine the optimization. So everybody use the optimization to do the water resource management. Uh, but uh, for current uh, research, most of them are focused on the uh, water water uh, water resource management. They, they focus on the uh, uh, for. Uh, the, the, the water flow problems, but they, they don't consider about the, the time. Because uh, as I mentioned before, when you, when you supply the water, uh, for, for, e for each time you, you, you have the water supply and for, for, each, for each time you also have the water demand. So actually you are not just compare, you, you, you don't just compare like uh, some, some water to, to another region uh, at some specific time. Actually, you want to do the, when, when you build a uh, pipeline, you need to consider the, the whole time series. So uh, basically you need to compare those uh, two uh, time series functions. So that's why we need to uh, combine the optimization and uh, the, the function analysis. And for the optimization, because the water resource system is like a network. So we always do the uh, network optimization problem for the water resource management. But right now we want to extend this network flow models to, to be the uh, uh, function space network flow problems. So that's the idea. And for the, uh, for, for the function analysis, we need to use the, the uh, Fourier uh, spectrum analysis to decomp decompose those uh, demand function and surprise functions. So in our model, we can consider from the supply side, we can consider the rainfall, we can consider the uh, river, uh, the, the surface flow, we can consider uh, ground, groundwater and also the uh, storage. And also we, we can uh, consider the, the demand side management. So for example, for the uh, agriculture, uh, water resource or the uh, uh, residential water resource, management and also the 
the uh, other other water resource management. And here is uh, uh on, the right, on the right hand side you can see that we campus in this uh, water supply curve. Uh, so this uh, time series water supply curve, and then we decompose this um, water supply curve into a different uh, spectrum uh, with a different sequence. So basically, we, we just want to uh, follow each uh, supply curve and the uh, demand curve. We want to decompose those uh, curve into a uh, different different uh, spectrums with uh, different frequency. And then we uh, we will combine those uh, those uh, those those, those uh, frequency analysis with the main overall population. And once you combine uh, those uh, methodology, and then you can uh, select uh, the best of the combination to connect those uh, to uh, to connect those uh, supply supply curve. And once you have a better uh, combination of supply curve, and then hopefully those uh, Supply curve can the, the combination of supply curve can can have a, a stable supply for the demand curve, and so so in our research we will uh, later I, I will introduce a network problem for the optimization and also I will introduce a Fourier uh, spectrum analysis and then we will combine those two uh, methods to provide a spectrum uh, network flow optimization tool for the uh, pipeline analysis. And we also did a case study for, for, for the pipeline connection. So uh, here I want to uh, give uh, some uh, short uh, introduction of the function space. Since, uh, as I mentioned before, so if, if you have a uh, two river and uh, you use a pipeline to connect those two river. So uh, assume that this pipeline is uh, has a very big uh, capacity. So actually you can uh, just uh, move all of the water from the river one to river two. So imagine this case, in, imagine this uh, scenario. So if you do this, uh, those two supply functions, they, 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 they can be at two, uh, they, 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 you need to calculate the sum of those two functions because this sum, sum of those two functions are the, are the, are the water supply for the new system, right? If you connect those two river and then deliver from river one to river two, deliver all of those water to river two. And right now the river two will have, uh, will have the, the sum of those two uh, functions. So, uh, so, so when, when we, so, so, so for a complicated system, you probably have a more uh, water supply system. Oh, you, you probably have more water supply curves and you, you also have a different uh, demand curves uh, on different time and uh, location. So you need to compare those uh, supply functions with uh, demand functions. So that's why we need a function space to analyze those functions. And uh, for, for the function for the function space, actually it's a uh, infinite dimensions uh, vector space. So everybody knows uh, vector space. So it's very easy to, uh, to, to understand the vector space because uh, we always learn the two dimensional vector space or three dimensional vector space because you can see them. But for the uh, functional space, uh, it's not easy to imagine, but imagine that uh, a function has a step function. If this function is a step function, and then this function has a three step, so step one, step two, and step three. So this function can be treated a, a vector with three dimension, right? Because the first, uh, first step, you have a, a function value. Second step, you, you have function value. Third step, you have a function value. So you can use three numbers to represent this uh, simple function. But for more complicated function, this complicated function, you, you, you probably have uh, infinite steps, right? You still have steps uh, going up and going down. So, so uh, a function, a complicated function can be treated a, a, a vector, but this vector has an infinite dimension. And all those uh, property from the vector space you can use for the function space. Uh, for the rest, they, they are pretty much the same. 
So, so in this infinite dimension function space, you can do the functional as to for the supply function and demand function. And we call this function a Hilbert space because this Hilbert space, uh, you can, uh, this Hilbert space has an infinite dimension. And uh, it also has uh, also the melody uh, property in this Hilbert space. Why, why, why do we need this orthogonality for this function space? Because uh, remember that in vector space, we always, from high school uh, mathematics, we, we always learn that the, the unit vector, the i and j, i is uh, one zero, j is uh, zero one, right? And in three dimensional space, I, I, we have i, j, k. i is uh, one, zero, uh, one zero zero and uh, zero one zero and zero zero one. So, uh, but, but in this Hilbert space, we still need those uh, unit vector to decompose those functions into the in, uh, unit vector, uni vectors. And then we, we can easily to compare those, uh, we, we can have the sum of function and we can compare the demand function with supply functions. So we, all, we still need those orthogonality. We, we still need those uh, uni vectors for this Hilbert space. But what is our uh, Hilbert? What what is the those uh those uh unit vector for the Hilbert space? Actually, we 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 will really learn, learn that. Uh, most of the people learn the the Fourier transform from your um uh mass class, and then the Fourier transform provides that say, says that you can use the uh sine function with cosine function, uh, sine function, cosine function with different frequency as our unit vector. So in this uh, Hilbert space, actually we have a uh, sine, sine function, cosine function with different uh, frequency as our unit vector. So uh, basically in our methodology, we, uh, we have uh, optimization, we have the spectrum analysis. Those spectrum as analysis means that you need to decompose those supply function, demand function into those uh, those uh, uh, you, you, you need to convert those functions to the the uh, Fourier Fourier series and then compare them. So here is the network flow problem. So uh, many people use the network flow problem to uh, do the water resource management. Because uh, if you look at this figure, you can see that this is a supply, a supply node and, and on the right-hand side, there is a demand nodes. And then you just supply the water from the left to the right. And but you, you need to, those, those nodes could be the transition points or the water treatment uh, location. And then you finally, the, the, the water can flow from the source to the, to the, to the demand. And the, uh, and the, uh, so so here are some notations. So so this G is a graph means means the represent the graph, and this graph has uh, nodes, the the vertex and the edge. Edge are the, the supply pipelines, and then uh, you you have the the constraint for this uh, network flow problem. So once you you build the, those those uh, constraint and the uh, and the objective function, so so you you can uh, use the optimization model to uh, optimize your water water uh, management. So uh, in, in our constraint, we have the, the mass balance equation. So uh, supply should be equal to the demand. Uh, inflow should be equal to the outflow. And pipeline, we, we have a pipeline capacity constraint. We also have the node capacity constraint. And we also have the storage. So we just put all of those uh, constraints into the, into the objective function. And then we'll try to minimize the cost or the maximize the the the, the supply supply uh, water water what maximize the water supply. So uh so basically you can use this uh, network flow uh problem to uh, do the water resource management. But uh those 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 models are very uh very very popular. So but in our in our method in in our um, methods. Actually, we want to extend extend the idea of this uh, network flow problem because right now the uh, water th those uh, those uh, decision variable they just provide the uh, water they just deliver the water at some specific time so they they don't deliver they, they don't need, uh, the 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 normal uh, network flow problem they didn't consider time 
But right now we want to extend this uh, network for problem into, into the um, uh, a time series problem. So we want to uh, optimize the uh, demand, uh, water demand uh, time series on this network for problem. And so, so here is uh, our case study. So we, uh, we have, you, you can see that detail of this water resource system, but you, you can see that on the left hand side, there is a water resource system and on the right hand side, there is another water resource system. So if you have some, uh, if we propose some uh, some pipeline to connect those, uh, those network, and hopefully they can provide a better uh, water supply for the two systems. So uh, we in, in our model, we also consider the uncertainty. So uh, in this uh, model, we, we call it a uh, two-stage stochastic optimization. So uh, we have some uncertainty in this optimization. And the, before the uncertainty, you have a first stage uh, decision to make. And after the uncertainty, you have the second stage uh, decision variable to make. And uh, in, in our first stage, because uh, you, you didn't know uh, what's, what's your, so, so, so you face some uncertainty. So you need to have some elastic uh, de uh, decision. You, you, because uh, in the future, you, you have an uncertain future. So in your first uh, decision, you need to make, uh, you need to consider all of those uh, scenarios and make a reasonable first stage decision. And in the second stage, because uh, it's the second stage, uh, you already know uh, what's happened because uh, maybe you have a low, uh, low, low river flow or you, you have very high uh, water supply. So for each um, scenario, you also can do the uh, op optimize. You, you can provide a, a optimal decision for uh, each scenario. And so, so uh, for our objective, you need to compile the first stage uh, decision with the second stage decision. But because the second, second decision, you have a different scenario. So actually you need to calculate the expected value of the second uh, objective function and then combine with the first stage uh, uh, objective function. So that's the two stages stochastic optimization. So our network, um, network uh, uh, Fourier analysis can be combined with this stochastic optimization. And also, if you have some uh, multi-objective uh, objective function, for example, you need to uh, do the water supply. And um, meanwhile, you probably also want to consider the, the hydropower. So you probably have uh, multi-objectives, multiple objectives for this optimization problem. So we can still do that. And uh, here are some uh, mathematical theory, uh, uh, some, some, some proof for the pipeline connection because uh, this is the, the system one. So you can uh, have, uh, so, so right now, you, so, so imagine that you, 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 you don't have the pipeline. So for system one, you can do a optimal choice to do the water resource management. And for system two, you can also do the optimal uh, decision, uh, decision making for the system two. But once you connect the system one with system two, and then you will have uh, water, you, you can have a water delivery from system one to system two. So uh, the two, those two optimization becomes a bigger optimization problem. But actually your original optimal decision variables can still be feasible solution for this uh, new big uh, system because you can assume that the, the flow between two systems are equal to zero. So which means that you just don't use this new pipeline. If you didn't use this new pipeline, you can still use your old um, water resource management strategy. So, so for this new system, you can do at least the same with the previous system. So which means that, so we, we just use this uh, mathematical, those, those uh, models to, to show that new pipeline always provide a better uh, strategy for the water resource management. And uh, here, here we, we try to uh, combine the optimization with uh, functional space. And we also um, provide uh, uh, some, some new tools. So we use a Python and then we just uh, uh, write down our own codes. So if you are interested, you can write me emails and then we can provide you the optimal, this uh, optimization tool. 
So this new tool can provide the optimization uh, on the function space. So here are some of our results. So we try to connect those uh, two uh, water resource systems, and then we, we try to find a better uh, pipeline. The, we want to find the best uh, choice of the pipeline to connect those uh, two systems. And uh, here are some of our uh, case studies. So you can see that uh, if you connect those two uh, systems, and uh, you you need to add those uh, those those functions together, and then you want the sum of the supply function is at least uh, more than the sum of the demand functions. So right now, in not you, you are not just compare the supply and demand. You compare function with function, supply function with uh, demand functions. And uh, here are some results from our our Python uh, model. So uh, yes. So, so since uh, because of the time limit, so so I want to move to the uh, conclusion. So we provide a, an analytical tool for the uh, water resource management. Uh, basically, we want to uh, if you have this uh, question for the if you, if you want to find a, uh, a find a find a good uh, connection for the water resource management, and then we provide a very good tool for this. And in our tool, we can provide the optimization for the for the function space. So basically, we want to do the optimize for the spike curve and the uh, demand curves. So uh, and our objective function can our, our model can consider the uncertainty with the multiple uh, objectives, and also hopefully in the future we can uh, uh, put those uh, climate change scenario into our simulation and then. Uh, we can discuss uh, some uh, real case and for the demand size management because uh, we we can always uh, if, if we uh, if if the su supply uh, curve is fixed and then we can also do the demand size management for example you can uh, change your crops or uh, switch your your irrigation uh, schedule. So uh, we, we can also do some management for the demand size, and hopefully our our um, our tools can provide a better uh, decision making for this kind of questions. So thank you very much, and uh, uh, questions or comments, and uh, you you can also write me emails. Thank you.